They stuck into the kitchen when no one was looking. Look out, Mama, it's Danger Man cooking. Hello again and welcome to Danger Men Cooking. My name is Steven Schlissel. I'm Gary Schmidt and we're going to take you for a ride up to Middlebury, Vermont and we're going to visit the Champlain Valley Creamery and Heart to Hearth where they make this wonderful lasagna pre-made that's available in stores around you today. Right. So we're going to take you for a trip up to where they process those products and then we're going to come back here we're going to have the lasagna ready to serve to show you and we're going to make a wonderful antipasta salad to go with it. So, in the meantime, let's get going. Take it away, Gary. All right. Here we are just north of town on Exchange Street at the Champlain Valley Creamery. This is Carlton Yoder, the proprietor. And when we finalized our recipe that's generations old, we wanted to use a local cheese in made in Vermont and something that we really felt was also the same kind of product as ours. All organic, local, responsibly produced, and not to mention just absolutely delicious to die for. So we tried a lot of cheeses around the state and actually it turns out the one we like the best is made right here in the same town where we are and that's the Champlain Valley Creamery. So we use this cheese for our filling and then for the topping of the lasagna as well. So Carlton, will you yeah. tell us a little about how you make the ricotta cheese? That sure, we use? sure. Essentially, um, the ricotta that you guys get from us is a, a less green version of our cream cheese. And I, I think we remember we did a bunch of yeah. trials with different stuff. We tried it with skim milk and things like that. And we just basically, well, you guys just came back and said that we just really like the one, the full fat one right. um, uh, with, with cream cheese. You know, it just tasted the best. Um, we bring milk in here in cans that we move ourselves uh, from an organic dairy in uh, Bridport, Vermont, which is about 10 miles from here. We, uh, we pasteurize in a, in a vat pasteurizer, um, and then the cheese is cultured for about seven hours. Uh, we, so typically at nighttime, we come in here uh, around 7 p.m., drain that cheese uh, overnight. Um, don't press the ricotta pork portion of it that much, uh, maybe for a little bit, and then repress the remaining uh, uh, cheese uh, in, in bags at that point, uh, and that becomes our cream cheese. So the ricotta basically came came out of that uh, out of that process, um, and we're pretty much the only folks we do that for. This cheese is basically custom made just for yeah. heart to heart lasagna. Nobody else in the world gets <laughs> this cheese, and it's a unique thing. We call him by basically Friday every week, and he right. makes 10, 20, 30 pounds, whatever we need for the following week, and then we pick it up usually Tuesdays at noon, we have a little thing. And right, right. It's a very customized, special process then. Yeah, and that, that cheese is probably packed for you at about 10 a.m., and you're picking it up at noon. Exactly. Is, uh, <laughs> it really doesn't get any fresher than that. So it's super fresh, right from the farm, made here in the cheese, and we pick right. it up. And, put it into our lasagna. Yeah, that cheese you're getting on Tuesday was basically milk coming out of a cow on Monday morning, so uh, the previous day. So, uh, like I said, probably no other way to get that any fresher that I can think of. Yeah, and um, then it goes into our lasagnas, typically Wednesdays is our production day, so essentially from the cow to the into the freezer by 48 hours. 48 hours, right. Stuff. I got a question for you. As the seasons change, the cows obviously are eating differently. Mm -hmm. They're not grazing. Does the does the cheese product change at all over? Do you, do you find there's a different taste whether they're eating silage or? or oh yeah, I think that the cheese definitely changes. Um, uh, but there's mostly a, a butter fat and maybe some of those flavor uh, flavor changes. Like you get definitely those grassy, garlicky, herbaceous notes more in the summertime. But at the same time, the fat. Is dropping. The cows drinking more water, and the, exactly, and they're actually eating more grass, which is uh, you know, not eating dry food either. So they're getting more moisture in their diet. Can you tell the difference? Or? Slightly, but I mean, they're, it's all delicious. It's all within the realm of what you'd expect from a like a craft artisan made cheese, and it's always absolutely delicious. And we mix it into our own recipe for the filling, so it comes out 
you know, like a handmade, craft made lasagna every time anyway. And that's always our go-to thing. With the changes of the seasons, we're always like, it's handmade. There's nothing we can do about it. <laughs> Artisanal product. <laughs> so I think it's nice. Our customers like to get something that's predictable and they know what it's gonna what it's gonna be, but if it's not exactly, you know, biologically, molecularly on the same thing, that's okay. You know, it's almost better. We're, uh, you know, we just, we're working with things we can't see, microbiology, um, and we just basically try to do the same things by keeping everything as clean as we can, um, you know, doing the same things in, in the same routine every time, because otherwise, it's out of our hands. <laughs> it's about the best we can do. Right, and we don't want it to be too clean, too perfect, too process basically because our customers want real stuff from the farm and that's what Vermont's all about. So yeah. yeah. So we use the ricotta that you made just for us. Right. We use your queso fresco in our toppings. Yeah. And what else do you make here for cheese? Oh sure. Um, so the uh, the cream cheese was our initial product. We were in a much small, smaller space. We started around 2003 in Virgins um, and our production area was um, a probably a third of this size. Mm -hmm. uh, so we basically had no room to age things. So I was like, well, nobody's making an artisan cream cheese. Um, so we started with that, something we could make one day and sell the next. Um, and out of that process, because it was difficult to sell a handmade, um, sort of uh, a completely uh, different direction cheese than the industrial foil wrapped brick you see everywhere. Um, it was just difficult to sell that because it, uh, it was more expensive milk, it was more expensive labor, uh, more expensive on the shelf. Uh, we came out with uh, another cheese which is behind us now draining. It's our Champlain Triple. Um, it's a soft ripened triple creme cheese. Uh, comes from the same base of milk and cream as the cream cheese. Um, but it basically just gets drained, uh, gets moved into these forms, it's drained for a few days, hand salted, and then aged for about a week after that. So about an 11 or 12 day process cycle time from milk to finished cheese, uh, and that will develop that bloomy white rind on the outside that uh, everybody's familiar with in like Brie or Camembert. Um, out of this process, because we're making our own cream, separating our own cream, uh, we create um, skim milk in that process, and for years we've struggled to figure out um, a cheese that we can make from straight skim, and we just decided it wasn't really possible. It makes kind of like a rubbery yeah. cheese uh, with, a, with not a lot of flavor, because you know, some chefs will tell you what fat equals flavor. Um, so we uh, actually struggled with that because we didn't have the capacity to get more whole milk. Uh, the vat wasn't big enough to do what we wanted to do. Um, we sort of overcome those hurdles by moving here to Middlebury, and we now make this um, uh, queso fresco cheese, which is a, basically began as a vehicle for us to use our skim milk instead of feeding it to pigs. So uh, the queso fresco came out of that. It's now a combination of uh, right. skim milk um, and whole milk, essentially 50-50. So it starts out at about two, like what you maybe buy 2% milk at the store. So somewhere in that range, 200, 2.5% fat. Um, we just make a, uh, a, a rennet set curd, where other, other cheeses are what are known as lactic set, uh, meaning the bacteria, the culture, is what's setting the milk, making the milk firm. Um, rennet cheeses, if you're not familiar with it, rennet is an enzyme that sets the milk, makes it like a gel, it's like a jello y like um, curd at that point. Uh, any of your harder cheeses, mozzarella, our queso fresco, uh, Parmesan cheddar are all rennet set cheeses. Um, and that, that setting process uh, takes anywhere from, well, we usually like to set it fairly slow, about an hour uh, to set the curd. Then we cut it to separate the curds in the whey, mm -hmm. just like the, uh, the nursery rhyme. And then uh, we get rid of the whey, um, and the curd becomes the cheese, the queso fresco. And that queso fresco, literally meaning fresh cheese, is another cheese uh, we make one day and it's ready the next. Um, essentially, we are fresh and short age cheese specialists <laughs> uh, here. A lot of people, um, will uh, age stuff out longer. We uh, haven't been doing that, but we do have another cheese that we make from the same queso fresco process that we call queso añejo, mm -hmm. where we uh, basically dry out cheese um, a little bit. Uh, it goes into a slightly different form. Uh, we rub paprika on the surface and then just age that uh, with a, to develop, let it develop a natural rind uh, for anywhere from four to five months. Uh, and that is our currently our oldest cheese that we're making. And we're making very small bits of that. The thing I don't like about that cheese is that I make changes to a recipe on a fresh cheese, I don't know the next day or you know two weeks from now whether or not it worked or I liked what I did or, or I didn't like it. Right. Um, with this cheese, I've been making some changes as we go along, but now I don't get any answers for four to five months, so it's a little frustrating for my 
uh, my fresh cheese brain <laughs> that I'm so used to working in. It's a little outside maybe my uh, comfort zone, but it's always good to do something like that too. Um, we do a variation on the triple cream, it's called pyramid scheme, which you may see draining down there. We put an ash layer on top of a pyramid shaped cheese. Um, and it's with the same triple cream base uh, as these up here. Uh, we call that a cheese pyramid scheme. Um, and that's uh, a uh, cheese that will have a layer of ash under the bloomy white rind. So it's kind of a cool thing when you cut into the cheese. It's got this bloomy white rind, a black layer underneath, and the yellow cheese on the inside. And really the ash layer is just there for aesthetics, good looks. You mentioned the rennet that you use to create the different yes. types of cheese. Where does that come from? Um, we actually purchase a microbial rennet. It's derived from a fermentation, not to get too technical, of a, of a certain mold, which it makes it the vegetarian rennet that people are mostly familiar with. Um, and we, did, we went that route mostly because it was difficult for us to source organic uh, animal rennet, and I think there is a certain portion of the market that is interested in having non-animal-based rennet used in the cheese. So we stick with this, and it's been a consistent product. Um, for us, uh, we purchased it from a supply warehouse in Wisconsin. Great. Good product. Well, Carlton, thanks for showing us around today. Your cheese is a huge part of why our lasagna is so delicious and so locally made and handcrafted and, and the product that it is. So we appreciate all the work that you put into making the product just the way it is for us and for sharing your facility here today. Thanks, Ben. So thanks for your support as well. You're very welcome. So we're going back to the kitchen where we do the rest of the preparation now. Okay, so here we are at the Heart to Hearth Lasagna Factory, which is actually uh, a 1830s farmhouse located in Middlebury, Vermont. And with me is Ben and Priscilla Powers, who run the organization and cook this fabulous lasagna that we are showing you on our show. And as you see here, we have the full array of ingredients that they use for their product. And uh, everything is organic and looks very fresh and delicious. How about if you give us an idea of your history and how you got started? Great. Well, thanks for visiting us. And our product is based on a family recipe that's at least a few generations old. My mm -hmm. mom's always cooked us lasagna for family dinners right. and special occasions. And we had the sense that we had something so special with those events and that food that we wanted to share it. So right. we started making and selling our lasagna at the farmer's market uh -huh. here in Middlebury. And then we thought it'd be fun to have it available to take further away right. as well. So we started putting it into this frozen package uh -huh. that we sell through okay. co-ops and fine specialty food retailers right. and we're looking to expand even further out to New England right. and sell other products as well. Alright, so uh, let's go back before we get into that about the uh, origins of your recipe for soda and how uh, you came about that and where does it come from? Well, welcome. Um, we, we've been making, as Ben said, we've been making lasagna for years and experimenting with different ingredients and different additions and loving uh, different choices for vegetables and whatever right. happens to be seasonal is what we've been right. using. So um, a real favorite last fall was a butternut squash and kale recipe. Yeah. And um, people had different ideas about uh, a Greek lasagna. We used Kalamata olives and feta cheese, right. for instance. So I think um, the recipes vary with the seasons. Mm -hmm. And we like to use uh, rice noodles lately that makes gluten free lasagna. Right. And so is this recipe, you have a basic recipe and then you do the variations right. on that. And so the basic recipe is something that you have formulated yourself over the years in terms of your family experience, certain years your family. And years. Right, years and years and experience. years. <laughs> exactly. You've eaten a lot of lasagna. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. It's a good hearty meal and I think right. it appeals to all ages. And um, I think our lasagna that we make now is very nutritionally sound and uh, kids love it. As we have seen 
the cheese experience. So uh, we know about that, the ingredients that are included there. How about um, just a little bit background of what we have here in terms of where the local ingredients come from and so forth? Sure. Yeah, the eggs all come from farms around Addison County. Our neighbor actually across the street mm -hmm. um, supplies us with some of the eggs, the produce. We get from local farms in season. In Vermont, it's tough. We have a shorter growing season, so right. we do get some from California and, and further away. But we do focus on having all organic right. ingredients, which I think is responsible and makes the product um, better. But it also has a really nice taste, I right. think. It makes the sauce, yeah. even though it's very simple with few ingredients, it just tastes amazing. Yeah. And the uh, cheese, as we saw earlier, comes from the local creamery. And this stuff is really good. You got to try it. Again, it's all really those good. cows have organic milk, mm -hmm. so the cheese is um, especially good. Right. And it's very creamy. Yeah, it just kind of makes you want to say, Moo. It's rich. Yeah. It's rich. <laughs> it's very fresh, too. You'll notice yeah. the, the cheese that we use when we grate it, it it literally melts in your mouth, right. whereas a lot of the shredded Parmesan or, or mozzarella you'll eat mm -hmm. has an anti-clumping agent, right. but it's not organic, so right, the right. texture and the flavor here mm -hmm. is just really pure and, and great. And we know that people who eat lasagna really like cheese. The feedback we get is we love the cheese, right. yeah. so we yeah. put more in. And yeah. We do um, use fresh spinach and fresh basil mm -hmm. right. during the season and Good. I think the basil component and a small amount of nutmeg makes it have a yeah, I was, very uh, yeah, I was looking taste. at the recipe and um, that's the first time actually I've heard of nutmeg in a lasagna. That's yeah. Nice. Yeah, that. there's something about that nutty flavor that really complements the cheese. We put a mm -hmm. tiny bit of red right. pepper in too so it just gives it a right. little bit of a Sweetens yeah. it up, I think. Yeah, yeah exactly. Bit. Right. It's almost like a cookie flavor in the lasagna. Here we have the marinara. Is that basically what well, we that's call it? Or? The beginnings of our tomato mm -hmm. sauce, uh -huh. and um, we add it's very nice and chopped onions thick. and mushrooms. Mm -hmm. to yeah, we try to, to that's keep nice. it as fresh and whole as we can in terms of the tomatoes right. because. We think if you put too much seasoning in, it, it just takes away right. from the flavor. So if you have a tomato that's that's really good, it can stand on its own. Right, right. So this kind of follows my philosophy of cooking. You know, if you if you got the right ingredients, healthy, wholesome ingredients, you don't have to do a whole lot exactly right. to make the product exactly. People what it is. like to see what they're eating, so I think we choose to um, cut the mushrooms rather big, and the tomatoes mm -hmm. are chopped and diced instead of right. the strained sauce. So. And we were thinking that the, the product is the lasagna itself, but the brand and the experience is, right. there's a whole second component to that, right. which is the feeling of being together and having a family dinner. And a lot of people, even though they value high quality food that tastes good, that comes from good places, they don't always have the time to collect it all and put it together. Right. So. Our solution is a meal that's very healthy, mm -hmm. responsibly sourced, and handcrafted, right. and also very convenient and easy to put together so you can have that special family experience. Right, right. Uh, so we found you doing a demo in Dorset, in front of the Union Store. Right. Uh, so where else do you distribute your products? All over Vermont. We have about 25 stores mm -hmm. now from... Manchester, through Rutland, uh, Middlebury, Montpelier, and Stowe. Oh, great. Um, and we are looking to expand that to the rest of New England. Mm -hmm. For now, if you want to find a store that sells Heart to Hearth lasagna, you go to our website, which is Heart to Hearth Vermont, V E R M O N T spelled out, dot com, and there's a list there. And uh, are you coming further south also to towards Bennington? Not yet. Manchester is about the furthest Manchester. we've okay. gone, but we are in the process of looking for mm -hmm. some help distributing our frozen lasagna right. further. And so, it, where in particular in Manchester? Well, we're at the Dorset Union Manchester, Store uh -huh. in the Fresh Market in Manchester. Oh, the Fresh Market. Well. Oh, okay. Oh, good. Yeah. Fresh Market. Yeah, we know Steve Burr's on there. So. Yep. 
All right. And the folks at Ski were up on the uh, on the hill at the Stratton Mountain Market mm -hmm. in Delhi as okay. well. Okay, so we have this uh, product here, and this is about... 36 ounces. 36 ounces, yeah. okay. And do you have other sizes available for this? We do. That's basically our four-serving mm -hmm. lasagna. We do a 12-serving for mm -hmm. parties and special oh, right. events. Okay. We also have a 24 ounce, which is more like a two serving, mm -hmm. and we're working on a single serve as well, okay. which is a little more convenient. And can people contact you for catering? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yep. We do special orders and delivery right. local. Okay. So that's definitely okay. an option. All right. And aside from the lasagna, uh, I hear you have some other offerings in the future. Yes, we're hoping to. Um, sell our biscotti, our gluten-free biscotti, and uh, we have a cranberry almond that we've tried, and also a chocolate hazelnut. And um, we're thinking of macaroni and cheese, uh -huh. and also an eggplant parmesan. Okay. And so what's been the impetus to uh, go with the gluten-free product? Well, good question. When we first started finalizing the family recipe into something we wanted to, to market. Um, we originally wanted to find all organic ingredients, right. and we tried a bunch of pastas, and the one that was organic that we could get a good supply of uh, just also happened to be made of brown rice and oh. naturally mm -hmm. gluten-free. And we kind of underestimated how important that is to people right. that, that yeah. can't eat things like lasagna, right. those comfort foods that they love. Yeah. And so we've had a great response. People love it and we're thinking we want to continue offering it and make yeah. that an option yeah, for good. people. Good. Very good. It is, it is a, uh, an important issue nowadays. It seems to be and even people that don't have to be gluten free have chosen it because right. they say they feel better, it's lighter, right. it cooks up nicely with right. all of the vegetables that they And they use. can eat more. Right, exactly. Okay, so let's uh, see if we can just take a look at the product. Okay, we're back in the kitchen at Heart to Hearth, and we've pulled out the lasagna, and you can take a look and see how delicious that looks. We have a little bit of their sauce on the side, and a plentiful amount of cheese, and of course, the taste is the test. So, we're going to give it a shot here. Oh, that looks good. Oh, that is good. <laughs> that is really good. Go get some. Okay, welcome back. We're in the kitchen and we have cooked up the lasagna that we told you about and you saw in the uh, previous shot. This is heart to hearth lasagna and all you have to do is pop it in the oven, follow the instructions and you'll have a wonderful meal. What we're going to do now is make this salad that's accompanying the lasagna. It's going to be a part marinated vegetable salad with a cold salad on the bottom. What we're going to do is marinate some vegetables and so here I have a marination of vinaigrette that's been boiling and uh, it's very hot and uh, we're going to place this over blanched vegetables. So Simply put, what you would do is make a nice Italian vinaigrette that you would use on your salad and you boil it and then over blanched vegetables you pour that mixture and the hot brine will infuse into those vegetables. And you would typically let this mixture marinate for about uh, a half hour at least to use them for that night, uh, let's say in your salad. And you can see how nice and fresh they are and the delicious aroma coming out of that uh, vinaigrette is really nice. So, 
we have that ready for the salad. And what we have here is some red cabbage with uh, cherry tomatoes and a little bit of that cheese that we obtained from Champlain Valley Creamery. And this has been uh, marinating in a little salt, the cabbage. You coat the cabbage with a little salt, let it sit, and it will tenderize it nicely. So we have this mixture of cheese, cabbage, and tomatoes. I'm going to just place that into this bowl. And what I have here also are some fresh beets, local beets. And what I've done is cut them into what we call julienne slices, very thin. And beets, of course, as we all know, have this terrible staining juice if it gets on your fingers and such. And if you pour this into a salad, it's going to bleed. So what I did was rinse out, after I cut them, I rinsed out the uh, color. And so now when you put them into a salad, they still have that taste and crunch, but it doesn't bleed, you know, and create that kind of messy look. So we have the beets now mixed with the tomatoes and cheese. Okay. And we're going to place this on the bottom. Looks like that. Put a couple of tomatoes. And then we're going to take these vegetables, put them right on the side, in the front, like that. And we're going to put a couple of tomatoes there for color and a little bit of cheese and the beets just for a little touch. And that's going to be our marinated vegetable salad. And to top it off, we can put a little bit of olive oil. A sprinkle of oregano and there we have a wonderful salad to go next to the lasagna. So we'll cut a piece of lasagna and put that on there and it will be a wonderful platter. And here is our platter of vegetables with our lasagna and you can see how delicious that looks. A great meal for a summer evening. These chilly summer evenings we've been having, you have a nice little crisp salad with some warm lasagna from heart to hearth. Okay, Gary, this is a beautiful plate you put together with your antipasto salad and heart to hearth, delicious lasagna. That's looking good. Yeah. I think the crew's getting ready to mm -hmm. eat some. Okay. The only thing we're missing now is a glass of wine. Oh, oh. here we go. Missing no longer. Mm -hmm. Now that we have the wine, we can tell you at home. Thanks for joining us today, and until next time, keep, keep on, on cooking. They snuck into the kitchen when no one was looking. Look out, Mama, it's Danger Man cooking.